Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York City, Kastubadas. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Thursday. We're actually doing a walk on Thursday today. But before we get to our special guest, mm-hmm. everything good with you, Kostuba? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm ready this to go. Sh- huh? I'm ready to go. You're ready to go? Okay, great. Yeah. I had a nice uh, program last night um, here in Nashville. Met a bunch of others um, um, and a bunch of Zoomers. It was are people nice. different down there? People are very different. You know what? You know what's different about New Yorkers than Nashville people? Mm-hmm. Everybody's really nice. I find it very uh, 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 off-putting. Hi. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? What do you want from me? What you... In New York, you're like, no one's welcoming and sweet. Go, go to like Salt Lake City or something like that. Then you're really. Yeah, they're, they're really nice. Yeah, well, I got nice. a beautiful gift from uh, Jen from Jenny from Yoga 101. She gave mm-hmm. me a squirrel. The squirrel thing is getting out of control, people. Like a real live squirrel? No, a stuffed animal squirrel. Okay. But that's nice. that's and everybody, yeah. And there's a bunch of people just listening to the show down there. It was it was sort of really exciting. And I'm doing another one tonight. Tonight we're just having kirtan, we're having prashad, and we're having storytelling. Looking forward. Beautiful. Perfect. It's perfect. All yeah. right. Say it again. It's kirtan. Kirtan, Prashad, Prashad, and Hiri, are bringing and Prashad, Prashad. And making a big feast. Maybe a little dancing. A little dancing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward. And then I'm heading to Houston tomorrow. Okay, and we, we want to welcome our special guest, and she's been a walk-on uh, Wednesday before. It's a walk-on Thursday. Please welcome Bobby Marchand. I wish I had a, uh, a clap, my clapping machine. <laughs> <laughs> Applause. Stand. Hi, Bobby. How are you? Morning. I'm well. How are you all? Doing good. Happy um, to see you. Nice Bobby to is. I'm wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. Bobby is an expert yoga teacher who's uh, doing a retreat uh, coming up with me. But um, you know, she had this beautiful, horrible, um, about with cancer, and uh, we brought her on last time to talk about what it was like and applying the how she applied the Bhagavatam to life. And just today, we just want to talk about a little bit about the stress of 2020, 2021, because everyone thinks like, well, 2021 is much better. 2021 has got a lot of people like losing their mind as well. And um, and about like wh- why you're teaching restorative yoga and uh, and yin yoga and how that is actually uh, useful in this, <laughs> maybe now more than ever. Yeah, I think. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> um uh for your kind words um but i owe it all to you See? <laughs> having See? it right that's, back. That's my teachers, great souls they always just pass it on my to teachers else. you know we that i get to uh, do what i do because of both of you so thank you um uh yeah i mean i i think i may have mentioned this maybe if i have in a previous uh, to, I know I've spoken to both of you with this. I used to be in the 
restaurant industry in New York. And that thrives on um, go, 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 go. And like the only way to like, for lack of a better term, like discharge the nervous system is like the end of the night antics in the service industry and i what What are the antics of i now i want to know what are the antics going on in the restaurant industry you just drink oh yeah takes the edge off yeah i mean i used to finish my shifts and um uh one night i noticed that as i was like closing out and doing all my closing duties that my hand was gnarled in a fist and i was like my my like I was gripping my glutes like it was my job and I was like whoa and I like took a breath and went like oh that was funny huh. but usually it's like as you're doing that you're getting poor glass of wine and then you're having like a huge meal at midnight like there's nothing sattvic. well that's got to be good for you it's great it's awesome and then you get up and you do it all over again but I saw an acupuncturist at that time and I was you know lamenting to her about I'm not sleeping through the night the um I wake up and I'm super tired and la 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 and she said well you have a yin deficiency and I had no idea what she meant she's like you're a youngaholic and I sort of then I still had no idea what she meant until I came across a yin yoga teacher I'm and stealing that, of, by the way, a Yangaholic. A Yangaholic, but I we kind of. I'm a little bit of a Yangaholic myself. Maybe a little, <laughs> a little. But that so much of what we do supports and strengthens that, right? Whether it's the ways in which we sure. like work out or the ways in which we do life. Like even when we like sit and like Netflix and chill, we're still stimulating our nervous system because we're still flooding it with light when the body is like, can you just let me rest for a minute? Right. Like the relation, and then I became really intrigued by like the relationship to resting. And that um, as a, you know, as a go-getter, I like to get as much stuff done as possible, like to the minute, like, oh, wow, I have like 53 minutes. I can still get from Brooklyn to, 74th and Broadway for a dance class about 53 minutes. I know I can get there. So just that like, like yeah, that inner- it in. Yeah. Um, towards my to- like latter few years living in New York, I loved to um, find ways to um, assist myself and others in um, just unplugging the senses a little even if it's for like 10 minutes you know it's not just the restaurant industry or something exactly, like, exactly. you know i'm dealing you know i, I yeah. deal with a lot of uh clients or and students who ha- are doing this with um what do they call them the uh, 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 the health health care industry taking yeah. care of people taking care of people with covid being in the emergency room first responders it's the same like so wound up so much pressure and i had it I still probably have it. Who am I kidding? But I had it really bad in Los Angeles when I was a yoga teacher because I would teach and drive. And I had I went into that guy. uh, I can't remember what his name is. um, The Dragon Herbs guy there in Santa Monica. And he's just like, I want to give you one piece of advice. I don't know what you're doing. And I was eating impeccably healthy. Right. Like you couldn't. So healthy. He's like. Your immune system is so shot. I, he's like, I don't know what to tell you. So it's it's not like I get an out because I teach yoga. You can still no. be stressed out teaching yoga. Well, um, that's the bit the one when, when I was um I, I read this really interesting thing the other day that to never to not refer to um an illness as a sickness but as a healing process. Ooh. Which I was like, oh that's cool. Um but while I was healing this incredible woman that I still continue to see said you can eat as well as you possibly can you can take all the supplements you can um do all the stuff but if you're not um balancing your nervous system you're not going to get you're not going to achieve health because health is a balanced 
nervous system. And now that we're in COVID and we're all working from home, we're spending so much time in light that mm. are, we're constantly charged. Like I purchased some like blue light glasses and like all of that stuff just so blue that like glasses right we're here. not, yeah. So that we're not in that space so much. And, um, I know the, um, the teachings that both you and Kastuba and, and the lineage that we're like so blessed to be a part of speaks so much to like sense control. And what I find compelling is not just sense control, but then sense, um, like sensory balance, like mm. that, of course, like we're in, we're in Ra we're in Rajas right now. So like, sure, let's do it. But like, right. do we still need to do it at when the sun goes down? So I think that's what I find interesting about like some of these quieter practices is then how do we bactify the quiet, like the can like, can like, like the Kastuba, Bhaktify. How Bhaktify it, this? right? Like I, I guess that's all of our mission. Just as devoted Bhaktify what exactly what we're doing. We got to Bhaktify it as well. We got to Bhaktify it, right? And and bring it like be just as devoted to who we are within our own house as who we are in the world. When you and I were talking just before the um uh this morning as we were. Yeah. Spoiler alert, we were, you know, we were should talking about this. Should we talk about this? Like you bhakti bombed me when I first met you, right? Like stood me yeah. on my hands for four hours. And then like, it was like a Bhagavad Gita pile drive. Like, yeah, that's it. That's yes, like, put, them in stand, put them in and handstands, aren't lecturing them. Handstands. And, like, and it was awesome because it made me want to be like bhakti in the world. And then also, can we then flip some of these quieter practices and then use them to um, absorb, kastuba them, right? Like kastuba them. I like them. that. Right? Because we don't want to raganop them too much. Well, we want to be both. <laughs> we want to be both. We want to like bring the, like we can't call the sattva in with the same way that we call the mm. And fire the fire so we got to bring in the water so so bobby g so tell us um what you'll be teaching in um because bobby is teaching with me right before the wisdom of the sages retreat in kali and i just want to share can you just share yeah briefly, sure um, thank what, you what, what you're you teaching just like now? just let me like just chat my brains out because it's kissed like, mm. um, <laughs> <laughs> um uh, time we'll limit here exploring, <laughs> like how to ways like very practical ways to calm the nervous systems mm. and that um the but like sure like being in an ashram is like ideal to do it but then after you leave how to still do it mm. which i think is really important so we'll practice <laughs> sort of from quiet to quietest right we'll start with like yin yoga which is using is utilizing the physical body to repurpose the energy of the body from like retrieving mode into receiving mode mm -hmm. i think it'll be so interesting the way that people then receive bhakti rather than grabbing for yeah. it perhaps right you can nice then move yourself it. into the mode of like oh let me be a sponge a little bit Kostuba, you're going to meet the new quiet raganath <laughs> Have more internal. when I see internalize. <laughs> internalize internalize your practice Bobby, uh, if you can do this okay cast <laughs> the spell right? yeah. but if, it, you can, if you can do this i will personally promote it uh, like you know every kind of spokesperson anyway, and then we'll do, yeah no we're a bunch of restorative yoga and Which then i'm moving and even quieter into yoga nidra when and i how used to each of these play a part in um, taking devotional energy and drawing it in. Mm. Well, um, and it's for people who want to teach it and for people who are like, that sounds like I want to start the year off like that. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I ever teach it to anybody else. I just want to know how to do it on me. You know, that's, um, that's beautiful. I love the concept of restorative yoga restores our sanity. Yeah, we created it's it's see it's not just the industry we're in, mm -mm. it's the entire 
culture is in Rajas and Tamas. And so we need to actively do something to counteract the effects of Kali Yuga. And that's why I'm loving doing this. And Mm -hmm. I just want to share that um, if you're doing Wisdom of the Sages retreat, you get $200 off that and $200 off this retreat. We're trying to make it accessible for everybody. um, And we're trying to just create community where we can, uh, we were talking yesterday, how, um, where we can actually see each other in the flesh and not just sort of like on the Zoom world. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in that, you could, uh, it's on my website, raganath.yoga. And it will take you that. And then hopefully we'll see in the Wisdom of the Sages retreat too as well. Bobby, thank you. You're empowered thank, and you are. Oh my gosh, are, thank uh, you. I'm. Thank you, Bobby. I'm. Spiritual lights be... in the community. <laughs> and we love you. Definitely. We love your daughter, oh, Frank. You oh, thank you. Well, she loves you both as well. And I mean, we don't even talk about how much she loves Mara. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, if I said to her, like, oh, mommy's going to, like, you know, go anywhere. She's like, well, is Mara coming? <laughs> oh, that's. Sweet. Mara coming today? That's sweet. Or their besties. <laughs> Yeah. You guys had a sleepover last night, didn't you? We did. We had a sleepover last night. Oh, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Pillow fights, clay masks. There was clay rest- masks. Arm there was wrestling, clay masks. hide and seek. Yeah. There's usually all of those things, but Frankie was asleep, so there was no hide and seek last night. Or. Well, thanks, Bobby. We love you. Thank love you. I love you guys. I have to actually. I'm sorry. I have to jump off to go teach. Five a.m. We're not. We take no offense. <laughs> Um, pushing thanks. the 5 a.m.ers are pushing their agenda against us. I am pushing that agenda selfishly. Yeah. Um, but thank you both. And I mean, just to be a part of this community is um, so soothing to know that we're all out there somewhere. It's just really so special. So thanks, thank Bobby. Thank you. We're going to give all the credit to Soothing Kastuba. Soothing Kastuba. I'm not a soothing because too, it sort of rhymes. <laughs> it does. We're going to make a hashtag out of it yet. All right. Very well. All right. But you know well? what Bobby was sharing? It, it does bring me back to that time we had done you on the show. Yeah. And uh, we were, one of the questions that she, that was brought to her had to do with um, self-care, which, you know, again, I'm not against self-care, but I have my issues with how it's interpreted sometimes. Yeah, and, you know, and, and and so then she, what? Uh, but I think Danya kind of like she narrowed it down in a nice way. She said, you know, there's there's one thing, you know, like uh, pampering oneself and so on, and then justifying that and calling that spiritual. That's like that's one thing, but we actually like a serious yogi does, you know, um, look after their nervous system, right? Mm, sure. And, and and it's really, you know, we see that that's throughout, you know, it's wove, even what we're reading here and what we're going to read next chapter, you know, again, what we've been reading in this 27th chapter is Kapil Dave's giving Dave Ahudi a, um, a, a, an object of meditation, right? Hear and chant and, and meditate, bring your mind, through hearing and chanting, bring your mind to the name, form, qualities, and pastimes of Krishna. That's your object of meditation. But when your nervous system is all out of whack, when your lifestyle is out of whack, uh, then it's hard to, to, and I think she even used the word absorb, right? So, uh, yeah. Bobby just did. It's hard to absorb your mind in that object of meditation. And it's through absorption in the object of meditation that the transformation in the mind takes place and the yoga happens. And so if your lifestyle and through your lifestyle, your nervous system is, what was it, yangaholic or, or yin deficient? Or, you know, I, I'm not so familiar with those terms and exactly what they mean, but... Well, we weren't either, but... <laughs> right. we just... But, but, um, but uh, you know, I could understand it more f- with through Ayurvedic terminology, right? There's an imbalance, vata imbalance, kapha, you know, whatever that might be. But, but if that imbalance is there, then it's hard to have an absorbed mind. The mind tends to be distracted. And, and so... Therefore, within yo, you know, even here, we're hearing about, you know, earlier um, Kapil Dave was saying, practice Mona, right? Practice silence. What is that, right? It's 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 nowadays we tell people like she was saying, you know, like you got to turn off your computer screen, you know, it's like you know, right, practice you silence. unplug, unplug, yeah, practice silence. Um, or we're going to hear in, in the next chapter, he's even going to talk about pranayama, right? Practicing pranayama, hmm. and so on. So yeah, you know, we through our diet through our our habits and our lifestyle and then adding yogic techniques 
these are all you know healthy beneficial uh things to do but never losing the focus right now understanding their context and, and why they're particularly valuable it's not so that you can enjoy sitting in a spa you know eating chocolates and sipping champagne or something like that it's so that you can focus your mind on the object of meditation well, very good very right. good anyway it was great to have bobby on and we are ready to get into the Bhagavatams, huh? All right. Narayanam namaskrityam naram chayeva narotamam devim sarasvatim vyasam datojayam mudirayet. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And to Srila Vyasa, the day of the author. Nasta prayeshu badreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtaki. By regular attendance and classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated and loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Gyana Tamarandasya Gyanan Janasalakaya Chaksurun Midatam Nena Tazmai Sri Gudave Namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. All right. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 27, Text 12, I think, Mara. No, I'm probably not that even close. Are you, 23. <laughs> what, like, where do you get so these numbers there. from? <laughs> You know, I'm opening like an old browser and it's okay. like was stuck on that. 23. All right. I thought we had a deal, Mara, where I, I say everything else and you jump yeah. in and say the verse. I couldn't get there fast enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> Me and Mara worked this out before the show. Okay. Next 27. 23. 23. <laughs> The influence of material nature has covered the living entity. These are good verses. Yeah. The influence of material nature has covered the living entity. And thus, it is as if the living entity were always in a blazing fire. Ouch. You know what? The first time I heard that in, uh, what's the morning song called? Guru Vastakam. Mm -hmm. The Guru Vastakam. Eight verses in glorification of the Guru written by? Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur, senior. Mm -hmm. That's right. That is, so it says, um, let me see if I can remember it. The spiritual master is receiving benedictions from the ocean of mercy. Mm -hmm. Just as a rain cloud extinguishes a forest fire, the spiritual master extinguishes the blazing fire of material existence. I offer my respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of such a spiritual master who is an ocean of auspicious qualities. Isn't that the most beautiful thing you've ever heard? <laughs> I'm blown away that you had that, that word for word like, memorized. That was great. That was, I, yeah. Um, and, you, and I was just, as you said that, right, I was, it was reminding me of what we were discussing yesterday. Do you want to complete your point? Go, go ahead and do that. Well, you, yeah, please. thank you. Um, um, but uh, it, my point was I was a new devotee and I was memorizing mm -hmm. that. And, I, and we were just, and I was. And still here. And I, yeah, years still there, plugged in that brain of mine. Um, and I was just thinking at the time, just as a rain cloud extinguishes a blazing forest fire, the spiritual master extinguishes the blazing forest fire of material existence. I was like, in my life at that time, I was like, yes, the material world. And some of you may just relate to this right now. The material world is a blazing forest fire. If you put, if you feel the material world is a blazing forest fire, Put I I on the board, okay? I I like I I Captain. <laughs> but anyway, that's exactly how I felt. And then you hear from teachers, and they extinguish like the burning fire in your heart through the dissemination of transcendental knowledge. And I still feel that way. I still feel like gurus, teachers, the Bhagavatam come into my life and just put out that fire. It's such a good analogy. And say, start it again. How did it start? The spiritual master is receiving benedictions from the ocean of mercy. So it's, okay. it's like a you're extending that analogy even more, con comparing God to an ocean of mercy. And even I would, as I was here, and I was thinking, and what is that ocean of mercy? It's really Bhagavatam, right? It's really these this this literary tradition and wisdom tradition found in these texts, right? So, like when we were discussing yesterday about, maybe it was yesterday, the day before, some about you know like guru figures 
charismatic guru figures, but mm -hmm. that never refer to the Bhagavatam. What, what's your source of where is this coming from, right? The cloud takes water from the ocean, right? Mm. And, and then it carries that, that ocean water, you know, it, it goes over the land and then it, it lets it loose on the land or on the fire, right? Yep. And so it, it, it's not that the cloud steps in and says, hey, I'm a cloud and I'm great and, you know, no, the cloud, it's saying, I'm take, I've got this water. It's, it's just transporting the water from one place to the next. That's, that's what the cloud is doing, right? And so that's what the, the, that's what the guru figure is meant to do, right? I, I'm not special, but I'm taking something from somewhere else and I'm bringing it to you. That's all I'm doing. I'm just the, the in-between, right? You know, did, do we end up, did we ever end up reading that verse yesterday, Vacho Begum? On the yeah, show? you started with okay. it. Because, because that we can. Just, I'm just going to read that verse again. Yesterday, and where's the and, and how does the guru become qualified to even receive that information? Right. Vajabe, a sober person who can tolerate the urge to speak, the mind's demands, the actions of anger, the urges of the tongue, belly, and genitals, is qualified to make disciples all over the world. So um, we, we 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 clean. This is what satan is. I'm cleaning the vessel. I'm undenting the can. And I'm trying to make myself a container to hold transcendental information. Why? First of all, this is self-care. Yeah, so you can put What's making me miserable? <laughs> I can't control my tongue, my belly, my genitals. I can't control my mind. That's making me sad. Hmm. And once I can figure out that, how to, how, to, how to clean out that container, that old dirty old thermos I'm carrying around, then the transcendental wisdom is stored there. And then it's seeps out and anybody who else then this what's coming out of my mouth will be transcendental information and if i'm living what i'm talking because sometimes people talk mm -hmm. but they don't live it but if i'm living what i'm talking that's when people say oh i like that guy i like that lady i want to be like mara stuff like that and then they like and then they start seeing and they, and they put you as a as a per and that's why this the concept of guruship can't really be um, institutionalized, although, you know, you can do it. But what really happens is a person starts walking their talk, their life starts changing, and they become impressive. And that is the parampara. Then people want to hear from you. And you're probably doing it already, because a lot of you have, might have even just changed your life around already. And people have people are taking notes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Who's taking notes? He's taking, people are taking You're notes. You're back to taking notes again, remember? <laughs> when you went on your first date and you took notes or something, what was it that you did? What? <laughs> Mara, remember. She Mara, what's he talking about? I took notes? Yeah, you're talking about going to the movies with a girl and you take notes or something like that. Remember, you're giving that analogy. I don't remember that. <laughs> okay. Are you sure it was me? Yeah, it was definitely you. Yeah, it was definitely you. There's what did I take yeah. notes on? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't know if you specified <laughs> Like spiritual things? No. 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 Oh, not material things. Words. Okay. Material things. You're not supposed okay. to bring up a devotee's past life. You know that, right? You're the one that brought it up. Taking I, how, otherwise, how would I have known about it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Good point. <laughs> people are taking notes. My point is people are taking notes on our behavior. And therefore, if we have like stellar right. spiritual transformative behavior, the people that love us, yeah. are taking notes your children and are taking notes your your spouse is taking notes your yeah. neighbors are taking notes your yeah, work people that people look up that you to you and love you yeah you know we don't live in a bubble and therefore what i do to myself both negative things like if i become an alcoholic if i become suicidal if i become angry all the time if i become rageful it it, it doesn't hurt you and sometimes people feel like i don't care i'm just getting drunk tonight you're not getting drunk the community of people are also going through the pain you're going through because we don't live in a snow globe. We are, we are like an energy going outward and we affect everybody that loves us. So all our positive things or negative things affect the people that love us. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kostuba. People have, <laughs> it's, it's become, what do you call it? It's become obvious that the message boards wants to call you Kosuda. Oh, I, you know, it, I think you promote like a false image of me. I'm not that guy, really. You know, maybe, you know, I can like maybe. Yes, although I'll say this, Where's I'm Mara? becoming a little. I am becoming a little bit more like that guy. There's a little bit, and and because you know what I realized the other day too, Raghunath, what is like, 
I used to like leave the apartment and like go to the park or you know, I mean what to speak of when I was a kid and everything but e even you know more as an adult and everything like that and I'd be looking for something that's happening and if there wasn't something happening out there I was a little bit disappointed you know what's going on today are they going to sing by the uh, John Lennon uh, strawberry fields are they <laughs> well, singing out there what's the latest but but now I kind of go out and nothing has to happen you know I just feel like I can just go out there you go out into nature nothing has to happen. it's it's already all there right there okay. yeah and and you can just um you know it's great I love I'm you know I'm the kind of person that does kind of thrive off of personal interaction that's one reason why I live in the city right um but and so if I do go, I like to bump into people that I know, or I like to get together with people that I know and do, My you know, brother. yeah, and he's like that. But now I, I feel less the need for that or any sense of disappointment. If that doesn't happen, I'm happy to just go out and be outside and and chant or, you know, be in nature and whatever it is, you know, and, yeah. and nothing has to happen. And, 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 and that you're actually free because it works every day, you know, works. it's like yeah. you can go out every day and if nothing happens, it's cool. And it's whoever like you meet, you soothe. Well, that's another thing too. It's yeah. Love you're the one you're my with. brother. You're going to run into my brother in that neighborhood and you're going to soothe him too. Find out his exact address. Okay. We'll go over to say hi. Cause it's literally, he, you know, I might be like looking out my window and seeing his window. Yes. It could be very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me finish. I didn't even get the first sentence done, but oh, it was okay. worth teasing out. 23, right? Yeah. The influence of material nature has covered the living entity, and thus it is as if the living entity were always in a blazing fire. Blazing fire. It is. By the process of seriously discharging bhakti or devotional service, this influence can be removed. Living proof. Living proof. Just as wooden sticks, which cause a fire, are themselves consumed by the fire. So mm -hmm. that's the analogy for the first line, which is we are partaking in the fire in, in, the, in the name of getting things done and creating and um, being social. We are getting consumed by the very thing that we want to soothe us. You know what the first realization I had when I lived in the ashram was? Listen. Well, before I lived in an ashram was I have to stay up late. Late, you know, if you go to parties and you go to shows and you go to clubs, it's always trying to push the limit. How late can I stay up? Yeah. And and like, it, no, you know, it's another That's way. That's when the cool stuff happens. We thought New Year's Eve, there's got to be something cool to do on New Year's Eve. It's going to get great. It's going to be I mean, a lot of you guys are maybe older now and you don't get it. But when I was 21 and 20, it's like that was really something's got to happen. Some some excitement, something like you're even when you're going to bed and watching TV, it's like you're going through the channels, anything, an explosion, a romance, <laughs> something. My thumb is the last thing to fall asleep before I go to bed. Right. Clicking around. But when I moved in the ashram, it was like New Year's Eve. We're going to bed at 830. I was like, yeah. And you know, what we're going to do the same thing we're doing every morning. We're going to wake up. <laughs> we're going to sing those songs. We're going to sway back and forth. We're going to circumambulate a Tulsi plant. That's what we're doing every day. And you're going to like it. And you know what? You do like it. It's yeah. sweet. It's wonderful. You don't need you don't need explosions, fire, you know, fireworks, the ball dropping. You don't need it. Right. You need the same sweet thing. We don't need to go wide. We need to go deep, deep. Right. And um, that was and going to bed early. I get it. It's, the joy is not in staying up late. It's getting to bed early so you can ap appreciate the early morning, which is really wonderful. And why is the early morning so valuable? One reason, because nothing's happening. Right. It's advantageous that nothing's happening. All going back to this Buddhist principle. <laughs> it's all nothing. <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm saying because nothing external is distracting, you can go into that, that again, that, that object you're mentioning, which may be form, right? Or, or, or pastimes and so on. So it's not Buddhistic like that, but it's Buddhistic in the sense that, yeah, let's, let's learn to concentrate. Well, I remember in, in the 80s when I lived in New York, um, and New York was like creepy, dangerous, weird, you know, druggies, uh, criminals back then. I used to work in a nightclub and I used to ride my bike home at 4.45 a.m. That's yeah. when I got out of my shift. Yeah. And even New York, which was ghetto, was the most pe at 4.45 a.m. Special at that time, huh? Special magic. No mm -hmm. one was on the streets. Few people yeah, up beautiful. there.
it was auspicious time. Well, you know that that is a principle too. In other words, that you know the the, the way the gunas work, the way that the, the modes of material nature work is that every object, every every object that's composed of matter, is a combination of these three modes of material nature, right? Just like the primary colors, you can mix the primary colors to the, there's three primary colors and you can blend them in different combinations and come up with all varieties of color, right? There's no color yeah. that you can't make from that, those three, from those three. So, so, um, similarly the three modes of material nature blend to create all of the, all of, all of matter, all the property, all the world that's around us. And so when I say object, that even includes things like the times of day, yeah. right? Like certain yeah. times of the day are sattvic by nature. And certain times of the day are tamasic by nature, and certain times of the day are, are rajasic by nature. People will argue that, but truthfully, you know, you and I have hung out before we were devotees, and we know that whenever there's trouble about to go down, it's usually after 10 o'clock, right? Or after 9 o'clock. Destruction, right? Like, in other words, what, what characterizes the mode of ignorance, the, the, the tamaguna? It's, it's a destructive mode, you know, self-destructive, as well as, you know, you know, um, externally <laughs> destructive as well. So what, like, for instance, you mentioned you were working at this club. You were straight edge and you're working at some like club until like... I was straight edge working at a... I was working at the Tunnel. It was a famous yeah, club. It was the yeah. Studio 54 of the 80s. Okay. <laughs> you sound proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was John Travolta. <laughs> Every night I go out there. And, and so Who's like, that on the dance floor? Like, I remember, I remember summers when I was a kid, right? And, and I've shared this before, but like, you know, I could walk into bars as a 16 year old or 15 year old, even, you know, like, you know, at least on the lower side and in certain, after there's no, there was no places. carding back then. Yeah. I get and, carded now. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. We have to do it. <laughs> so, so, but like, especially during the summers, like there are friends of mine who really fully lived that life that it was like every yeah. night, in other words, the night really didn't get started until about after nine o'clock, right? Like oh, after forget nine like o'clock. Like I, midnight. I mean, like well, you hit the streets didn't really at nine o'clock until eleven thirty yeah. or midnight. Yeah, yeah. You would hit the streets at nine o'clock, right? Yeah. And then, and and then find some event. Maybe have have your dinner at like ten o'clock. And, and it then, was, you know, I, I, in, yeah. in all honesty, Prabhu, it was something exciting about like like wow, while I'm sleeping, look what I'm missing out on. That yeah. idea of what I'm missing out on perpetuates the FOMO. whole material existence. It's called FOMO now. We call it FOMO. That's a great an acronym. <laughs> Is it an acronym or acronym? acronym? An acronym. Acronym, I think. Acronym. Yeah. An acronym. <laughs> Just settle on one. <laughs> okay, it's acronym, but it's acronym. <laughs> at least choose one. FOMO. So. Yeah, fear of missing out. So, so, um, but my point is this: is that that time of night, right? That that's it, the 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 night hours are the tamasic time, right? And so, my you know, I had friends that were living in that time, like they were waking up and going out at that time. Their 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 main, you know, it would be good. You'd hit the streets, you'd hit the bars, you'd hit the after hours clubs, and of course, what did you do? You you know. There's all kinds of, you know, the, you, you increase the, the tamaguna by more adding, illicit. You know, by First of all, the, the bars were, to it. right? Remember the bars, they were all illegal. They were illegal bars because bars, were, bars yeah. had to close at a certain time and they would open when the bars had to close. Two o'clock or whatever. Yeah. A7 was like that. You know, everyone talks about A7, but like. Save the robots. Well, I mean, A7, the show started so late there. Like midnight, midnight to five a.m. Even later, yeah. <laughs> it was like the show would start at one thirty. I, I can't stay up for this, guys. I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> but there was a sense of excitement of staying up late too. Like, wow. I mean, yeah, we were young. Well, that's the FOMO. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But this is the point that I want to make: is because that was a tamasic time of day, and because it would, you know, it would become self-destructive. And people that would go deep into that lifestyle, like live it every day, wake up at. 11 or 12 in the morning, right? Lie around in a tamasic state, you know, during the day when you're supposed to be rajasic and getting stuff done in one sense. And, and then going out later and really living in the nighttime. You, you look at those people and see what happened to their lives. 
you know, how, how, how self-destructive that behavior was, how the, the mode of ignorance, you could see its effect, how it, how it leads, leads to addictions, you know, to, to all kinds of issues and problems. Uh, what's well, the speed it's of very violence rare. and so on? Yeah, it's yeah. very rare you see a drunken brawl happen at 6.30 in the morning. Exactly. If I say there's right. a drunken brawl, it's like, when did it happen last night? Yeah, right? I mean, all the statistics will bear, all now, the police here statistics will bear come the um, naysayers. Well, no, I'm just joking. Not naysayers, right. but they're sort of like questioning the idea. They're Skeptics? Like, well, what happens if, first, the first, first Joe says on the message board, good question, what if you have to work nights? Some people have well, to work nights. Then you're going to have to deal with that influence. Then you have to deal with that influence, right? I, I think it's true if you talk about like if you work in the emergency room and say, "What's who's coming in there at night?" You know, yeah, what is yeah? What does it look like? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Yoga Love says, uh, "What if one lives alone and gets more calm and peaceful at night and connected at night?" That just happened. That does happen. Uh, you know, here's the deal. These are general. It's what those are competing principles. Well. Those yeah. are competing principles. It's, in yeah. other words, the solitude is what you're thriving off of. But imagine if you actually went to sleep earlier and got up earlier, you'd have this, you'd have the same thing, but it would be increased because you'd right. have the mode of the sattva guna working for you. Yeah. And that's why a lot of times you hear the, these saints like Prabhupada and Bhakti Vinod Thakur, they'd go to bed like at eight o'clock till midnight and then they'd wake up and yeah. they'd work for four hours or right. And then you take naps during the day because they want to be like refreshed for that, those morning hours. Yeah. I know you and I, we would wake up at 2.30 every day. Yep. I woke up at 2.30 for like five years. That yeah. sounds ridiculous if you tell a civilian, mm -hmm. an ashram civilian. <laughs> but it was a great time because it completely still. Yeah. All right. Enough of this. Those are great hours. The mind can really go, go into. That's one of the reasons why we've been doing this at 8 o'clock is because I was missing out on those hours, which I need to. Yeah. We're getting a lot of pushback today, but it's working against yeah. the very pushers because we have 112 people live on Zoom today. Yeah. And, you know, here I am in Central Time with Cindy Lunsford of Soul Yoga. And this whole uh, this whole time zone would be like out to lunch because it's 4 a.m. at the 5 a.m. time. What to speak of the California, Leslie Vente would be not doing anything if this was <laughs> not at 8 o'clock. And no. Scott, Scott would not be here. So there is something to be said. We're going to let okay. these guys arm wrestle it out to see where we go, 5 a.m. Okay. or 8 a.m., but okay. Okay. Joe's text, open. Yes. You. Text 24. Teammate. Text 24. And no offense, Joe, about being an ace there. No, you're just challenging the challenging it, or I get that. Um, yeah, if you have, you have to deal with that influence if you have to work through the night for sure. All right, sir. Text 23, 24, Four. 24. Okay. Oh, this is a great, I, beautiful verse. Okay. This is a beautiful verse. By discovering the faultiness of his desiring to lord it over the material nature, there's a faultiness <laughs> to even desire it, to lord over material nature. That means I'm controller. I'm, I own it. I possess it. My, I, me, and mine. And by therefore giving it up, the living entity becomes independent and stands in his own glory. Hey, stand in your glory, brother. We are quite glorious beings. <laughs> but because I'm identifying with my, I'm trying to be God. I'm trying to play the role of God. Those are, those are shoes I can't fit into. And therefore, I can't possess. I can't maintain even. I can't, I, I try my best to do all those things. I have stuff. I try to maintain things. I try not to get sick. I, I, right. But eventually I'm not the center. I'm part of something bigger. I'm part of the whole. I'm here to serve the soul. That was yesterday. We teased that out yesterday. Yeah, well, is, this is so appropriate. For beautiful this. hand analogy. Remember that one? I remember that. There's a um, <laughs> term here. Sve Mahimni. What's a, this, this Mahi, like a Mahi Mamrita or, you know. Um, yeah. What like, does that mean? Like it's a glorification, it's like the Vrindavan Mahimamrita or what does Mahima mean? So my, it means glory. Okay. So Sve Mahimni means one's own glory. Right? In other words, the, the your glory which is inherent in your nature. Right? Yep. In other words, each one of us is glorious. We each one of us is a glowing, glorious, a spark of of the energy of God. That's our glory. 
And but where we screw it up is we try to take that role. Here it says, by discovering the faultiness, there's a faultiness in our thinking. By discovering the faultiness of their desiring to lord it over the material nature. And by there, I need to discover the faultiness in it. And through d understanding that, I need to let it go, give it up. Yeah. Then I then then one um, stands in their own glory, their own inherent glory, right? It's 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 a nice. Um, I I I think it's a beautiful verse, uh, and it it's, it makes me think. You know, it, it it's something hard to get through the head. But as you, the more that you, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, marinate your mind. Mar Ooh, marinate. marinate. You like that? Oh, you are <laughs> a poet. Using a little, using a little <laughs> culinary <laughs> metaphor. Culinary. We only using culinary analogies. I got a thumbs up from Mara. <laughs> That's right. The so, food service yeah. department here. Okay. Yeah. So, so by letting the mind, mar the more that the mind marinates in this uh, Bhagavatam philosophy, the more that this statement, which could sound very, um, it can ruffle a feather or something like that, you know, like trying to enjoy the material nature. Come on, that's what I'm meant to do. That's what I'm born to do. I'm meant to be enjoying this world, and you're telling me I'm not to? Mm. And, and it takes some insight and then applying faith to that insight and then the insight growing deeper. Yep. to begin to to be able to let it go but it, it's something like this it's, it's something like well you know it's of course it's played out in the ramayana right where you have hanuman you have the the the, the um the the juxtap juxtaposition of hanuman and ravana right yep and one is trying to you see you, you have to look at this philosophically but like sita is understood to be the energy of ram right she's the the ladini shakti she's She's, uh, you know, the direct energy of, of God. And the Ladini Shakti means to be enjoyed. So like her devotion and her love is enjoyed by Ram, who's the center of all existence, who's Krishna, who's like, who's that root of it all. We are, our nature is similar that we're meant to be enjoyed by God. And when you do, you enjoy. And so That's Ravana, how we find our enjoyment. Ravana looks at the energy of God in the form of Sita and says, I want to play the role of Ram. I want to enjoy her. But that's not your energy. That's his energy, right? And, and Hanuman says, no, Sita is the energy of Ram. I want to return Sita to Ram. And that's where he finds his, his own happiness as well as standing in his own glory. His glory is in his returning the energy of Ram to Ram. Mm. And so our life is like that. We're going through life. You look at Krishna and the gopis and the Rasa Lila and all that, you know, and we think, I want to be Krishna in that, you know, I want to be surrounded by beautiful women and I want, you know, to enjoy. But the fact is, the who Krishna enjoys in the Rasa Lila is his own energy, right? Whereas, like, for us, the energy that we're trying to enjoy isn't our own. We didn't create any of these people. We didn't create the material energy. We didn't create anything. And so we're tr it's, it's kind of like being a thief that I want to enjoy Krishna's energy and pretend I'm Krishna. When really we're invited to, to take part in that blissful Leela, but we decide, we, we reject that invitation and we try to step outside that and enjoy what's not ours. And, and that's the faultiness, right? That's right by discovering the faultiness of their desiring to lord it over the material nature. I didn't create this energy, therefore I have no right to take it, hmm. right? Right. And so there's a faultiness in it, and it's, a, it's a, just a fundamental principle that not only brings us misery and happiness, prevents us from standing in our own true glory, right? That's how I look at it, Raga. That, that's when you're supposed to say, huh? Huh? <laughs> Give it a little bit. Of, is that some kind of Which is like another way of, of yours? No, it's just another way of saying... <laughs> What do you think about that, Kastuba? <laughs> why, why don't you read a little of the commentary and see what see what we get here? Because the living entity is not actually the enjoyer of the material <laughs> resources. That, that almost that almost hurts the American in it me. Hurts. It Doesn't hurts. It hurts. Like I'm not the enjoyer. What kind of like? <laughs> Can I be the enjoyer? Flagellating, <laughs> religious, dogmatic, yeah. right? Because the living entity is not actually the enjoyer of the material resources. His attempt to lord it over material nature is, at the ultimate issue, frustrated. Mm -hmm. It just is. It's just like we're not trying to like 
That's just what it is. We're not the enjoyer. We're not the center of the universe. Why is that so hard to get through our thick we're, skull? At the same time, we're blissful by nature. It's just because we're playing this false role is that we're not experiencing that true nature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As a result, as a result of, of the as a result of the frustration, he desires more power than the ordinary <laughs> living entity, and thus wants to merge into the existence of the supreme enjoyer. Oh, probably such way. a master here. Yeah. It, it, this read way, the last that the next sentence. In this in, way, he develops a plan for greater yet greater enjoyment. Okay. Did you see what Prabhupada did there? Yeah. He he, he threw in not only are you the materialist, then he's thinking. Well, how do you even rise above that to the next yeah. level? So it went from karma, personalism, from karma to jnana, and then now he's going to go to bhakti, right? In other words, one way to look at this world is I meant to enjoy it. And then when you have some deeper jnana, some deeper insight, you say, God, suffering comes with all the enjoyment. It's always frustrated. Now I want to merge into God and become the enjoyer. Like if you I know, can't take God's people, role in this world, yeah. then I want to become God. So that's a, where I think a lot of people here... I, 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 it's safe to say, like in the, you know, the Western world, we've had a lot of material enjoyment. We get enjoyment that people don't. It's not like we have to go and, you know, there's people in this world that they're just working their ass off constantly. A lot of times there's a lot of freedoms that we have where we can enjoy and indulge. And if some of us have really cleverly worked the material world or, or so we think that we have some, uh, extra time free time um silver spoons you know um uh, a lot of horsepower with our material desires and then we start to realize the flip side of that which is from enjoyment comes it, enjoyment's peppered with sadness peppered. with misery peppered laden laden well i'm trying to keep with the uh <laughs> oh, the, the culinary culinary uh analogy Even the way you pronounce that word has to be right because I, I i feel as i saying culinary right but culinary is it, is it culinary cul culinary how do you pronounce it people culinary cul it's culinary. culinary i think it's culinary i was I seeing culinary. it in my mind culinary okay maybe that is okay. so uh, sticking with those culinary examples uh the, mat the our material enjoyment is peppered with pain I mean, come on. Pepper. All you got to do is try to enjoy the material world. Yeah, we made this big vacation. And I had a friend that went on like a tropical vacation and they went to an island off of Australia and they got caught in a hurricane. And that mm -hmm. was their vacation, like s trying to save their lives. Mm -hmm. um, so it's sometimes our planning for enjoyment can oftentimes be the greatest <laughs> cause of our pain. And um, that's just the way the material world is. It is a sweet apple with a razor blade in it. <laughs> a razor blade. You could have said like you know, a rotten core. You know how they used to do that in little kids. You know, the parents would always be like, it. check is that your an apples. urban myth? Is that an urban myth? No, people did it back then. There were a lot of crazy people how when I was know? growing up. How do I know? Yeah. I don't know, my okay. friend. It could be an urban myth. No, I think Pete, there gonna, was... I can do some myth bust in here too. You're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there. I'm, all, I'm, all I'm saying is that's with the material. You know what the Indians say? They say there's sand in your sweet rice. Sweet rice is like mm. white rice pudding, which is very and it's very sweet. And it's very delicious. But imagine if someone sprinkled some sand in there. You can't fully enjoy that sweet rice. That's the material world. It's sand in the sweet rice. It's a razor blade in the apple. It's like the time I um I broke a bottle and it while I was cooking soup and it shattered and glass went everywhere and there was always like, is there a piece of glass in my soup now? Do I have to get rid of my entire <laughs> pot of soup or do I just feed it to the kids and just I'm not gonna feed if one shard of glass and because I don't want to waste my so it's like that's the material world. You could be everything. It's it's like a it's a very especially if you're successful in sense gratification. It's still a gorgeous tropical minefield mm. Mm. okay i think we're out of time we but thank you for sharing oh, that man. gorgeous tropical <laughs> minefield look at mara she's like oh take away i gotta put the pie on the rack get back here mara do we have any takeaways where she's running off okay. i got one for you the material it. world is a gorgeous tropical minefield that's a takeaway it's pretty good or material enjoyment is peppered with pain how about Boom. that? One? Same. Yep. Yeah. Factify your life. T-shirt. Out of 
Yeah, out of the retrieve and into the receive. What? Mm -hmm. Say that again. Out of the out of the retrieve and into the receive. Out of the retrieve. Like out retrieving, the like going. Were they after listening to our... like, <laughs> This was from Bobby, actually. This Bobby, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobby uh, said restored... that you mean, or she shared it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Bobby said that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Let's see. Are they allowed yeah, to do that? Bring that. in Bobby's stuff now. <laughs> Yeah, you can. It was good. Boxify okay. your life. That was a good one. Yeah, boxify uh, your life. The guru is like the cloud transporting the water from the ocean. Mm -hmm. People are taking notes on our behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like people are spying you on you. How about that one? <laughs> um, enjoying the material world is like eating sweet rice with sand. And, and Jomo, not FOMO. Jomo? The joy, joy of missing, missing out. The joy mm -hmm. of missing it. Ooh, I lucky. I lucky that one, Kastuba. Huh? Right. <laughs> joy of missing out, I guess. That was a good. Hey, hey. this Sunday we got uh, Driti Dasi, painting extraordinaire, Bhakti hey. painter, artist. Oh. We're going to talk about art. We're going to be discussing art and the finer things in life mm. while you're away. I think art is graffiti. <laughs> I'm getting a tattoo, and it might be a Wisdom of the Sages tattoo from one of our Zoomers. Oh, why don't you get the logo? There you go. I get the get logo. the soda with the microphone. It is cool. I don't want to get the it's logo. too much like getting your own band logo or something. Like that. Everybody follow her at Kim Rossini. Two S's. Kim Rossini. You might be the best. Well, Scott Bakos up there too. Some of the best, and Dustin, of course. <laughs> Dustin, and the best. Half of our listeners are tattoo Sages artists. Has the best transcendental <laughs> tattooist out there, Kim Rossini. She's from Switzerland, and I tell you, she draws a dog that looks just like a freaking dog. Unbelievable! I might get a dog. I'm a dog. I'll go person. back with a squirrel, a dog, and a new tattoo. A squirrel! I should get a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should get the Wisdom of Sages logo tattoo. That would be cool. Someone will get it. I can't get it. That's Mara's like, like that's me. Today. That's mine. I got it. it. Mara could get it. Mara's going to shave her Mara head tattoo and do like my hand. on the side of her head. Mara like, and Kastuba there. tattoos on my hand. <laughs> oh, you can put them all three together. <laughs> <laughs> Great. 